Towards the end of sophomore year of high school, a few close friends and I decided to collaboratively set up a baseball game one Sunday afternoon. The very first game we had, about 20 people show up to play. This began the craze was known as Sunday Baseball, but it was eventually renamed Scrub League Nation. Throughout the first summer, the manager at the time, Andrew Love, set up games two times a week on average via a mass text. The teams were never entirely the same because rarely did everyone show up at each game. Also, we had team captains who picked different people depending on how they played the previous week. Early on in the summer, Andrew came up with the idea to order shirts with our nicknames and numbers on them to make the league slightly more official. No one knows the exact origins of baseball, but many people consider it to originate from an old English game known as rounders. Although many people believe baseball was formed by Abner Doubleday, Alexander Cartwright was a true creator. He formulated many of the rules that are still in use today and created one of the earliest organized leagues. In 1857, many team leaders met at a convention to regulate the game and formulate the rules by which it would be played. The following year, the National Association of Baseball Players was formed as the first organized league. Following the Civil War, baseball's popularity increased drastically and it became normal to start charging admission to view the games. This changed baseball forever, and it quickly became a very popular spectator sport across America. Many of the rules and regulations created at this meeting are the same general rules we use for our Scrub League baseball games. Hey, Pedro, how you doing? Shut up. Canatella delivers. Morano swings, and it's a long drive to deep left field. Way back. Packer to the wall. This ball is gone. The games were both competitive and laid back at the same time. The competition was displayed due to the copious amounts of smack talk throughout the games. The laid back portion was evident when we declared pitchers could only throw a certain speed limit to allow for more level playing field. The skill level was slightly above recreational leagues at some points, however more often than not it was below. We never really envisioned forming these games and group of kids into an organized larger league, but it probably wouldn't have been too difficult. Aside from the fact that there was already an organized league in the area, the only other things we would have needed to do would have been to find a larger interest group, decide on the format of the league, and find a few fields we could rent out for a few games. This most likely would never have happened because we all enjoyed the exclusivity and format of the games that we played. Following senior year, our original league manager had left, so we needed a new person to fill his place. Connor Salter attempted to fill the void at first, but after a few not-so-enjoyable games were played, Brad Lathrop stepped into his place. He formed a new Facebook group entitled SLB with the intent on keeping the league alive. The group is currently comprised of 45 members but originated with around 30, and the only way to get in is by invitation. In this scenario, social networking was a great beneficiary toward the survival of Scrub League Nation. Social networking originated with emails in 1979. With the emergence of Friendster, it really took off. MySpace, Facebook, and Twitter were all created within a few years of Friendster, and now Facebook has the most overall users. The creation of our Facebook group allowed people to post comments responding to the best available game times, and this proved to be a far more efficient means of scheduling than sending out mass texts. In retrospect, the phenomenon of Scrub League Baseball was one of the most enjoyable experiences during high school. I became friends with many people who were originally acquaintances, and allowed me to play the one sport I loved the most with others who enjoyed it. There are very many momentous occasions throughout the three years of the group. The first one occurred away from our home field at Midway Park one summer night during the inaugural season. Because both of our main fields at Midway Park were in use, we moved the game to Sunny Mountain Park, and little did we know this game would become a memorable one. It was the first game we played under the lights, and it was the first extra inning game as well. This game marked the birth of the nickname BJ Chokovar Tovar, because he surrendered the walk-off hit with two outs and a lead to one of the most inconsistent hitters of the group at the time. Another memorable moment occurred in the summer following junior year, and it came to be known as the Ducktown Disaster. Many guys made the 20-minute drive to a park in Ducktown, only to realize that the field was in terrible condition. They still played the game, but due to many arguments in the high midsummer heat, the game was never finished and almost marked the demise of Scrub League. The following game didn't take place until a few weeks later because we didn't want a similar incident too soon afterwards. Two events in particular stood out from the final season of Scrub League. The first one was the interleague all-star game played at Central Park. The top 10 kids from the main group played against another group from that area that a few of us knew. This marked the only game of this style and it turned out to be a great game. They came back in the top of the ninth inning to take the lead after being down by five runs. We tied it up and brought it to extra innings, where we eventually won with a walk-off triple with two outs. 
The other prominent moment consisted of two parts, the game and the post-game celebration. Nearly 30 people showed up for the final game, and we also had our first ever inclement weather delay, which lasted a total of 10 minutes. The game itself was an intensely fought battle to the end, with my team prevailing. The post-game celebration was unofficially hosted by Zaxby's, and after we finished eating, we hosted an awards ceremony, the first ever to end a season. Overall, this experience has impacted me greatly and will leave everlasting memories and friendships. Mm -hmm.